Hey everybody, welcome to the number 42 podcast. This is uh, Servbot42 on March 20th, 2016. How are ya? Little Bill Burr over there. Anyways, yep, this is my first podcast. I'm gonna see how this works out, and uh, if not, well then, who knows? I mean, shit, gotta try something once, right? <laughs> also, yeah, as I uh, probably will mention, this is NFSW. So, don't worry. I'm not gonna play any porno or anything, but you know, it might get a little graphic. You know, speaking my mind, apparently that's not a good thing these days. But oh man. Anyways, let's get right to this. Ah, so that's who I am. Shoot. I love being on Google Plus, as you guys know. It's like my new site for all this bull crap that I do. Mostly just anime and video games. That's probably why you're listening here. That or I advertise this somewhere or you just stumble it on YouTube either way what's up get welcome sit down and all that crap what I do what I'm doing currently right now ugh, besides my shit job at the freaking box factory <laughs> well no I unload boxes which is a bunch of bullshit but hey you gotta pay the bills somehow well part of it um other than that shoot I uh part time job which kinda sucks um, I am going to school to be a game developer, <clears throat> and that I have been there for a year. Uh, a little back story about that. Actually, <laughs> let's start that with a little bit of drama, and I'll uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So yeah, I was uh, I was going into class today, and the first thing I always do is go into the cafeteria because one of my friends is there, and he always likes to slack off on Smash Brothers. And uh, this isn't a this is a pretty expensive school we're going to, so you know when I see people there, I just see them throwing their money away, and that's probably because they're trust fund babies. Well, not me though. I'm freak. I'm the Kenny McCormick of that place, and so is my friend that I'm talking about right now. So we do have something in common: our poverty, constant hunger, need for all that shit. But hey, somehow somehow I still find uh, time to buy amiibos now. <laughs> well, anyways. He's there, right? And I see him. <clears throat> and I tell him what's up. I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know? And soon enough, like after, after you know, the cordial hello, hi, I just start breaking his balls. <laughs> right? And then I mention him. Like, I had some buku juku uh, military guy just fuck out on me from last week because I asked him to. This guy that I'm talking about, I, um, I want him to stay after class so we can work on Maya together. Kind of learn a little bit more, but he wanted to go home and play WoW. Not WoW. It was fucking League. League. I was like, all right. That right there was a red flag for me. Any anybody that just kind of does not want to study and just go play video games. I mean, yeah, you're a game developer, but you don't do that. It's it's you actually work. So when I said that. <laughs> I said it pretty loud, and I told him, and I told my friend that I was playing Smash Bros. I was like, you know, if, if you're just gonna keep doing this shit like him, you know, might as well just apply at Starbucks, because that's my joke, you know. You get a degree, you graduate, you become a game designer, and then a couple months later, you, t- due to all your slacking, you end up at Starbucks. <laughs> that guy I was talking shit about was right behind me. <laughs> oh man, it was so good. Egg on my face, but hey, you gotta stick with it, man. I was like, fuck it. But yeah, well, here's the reason why that shit happened. Uh, when I first enlisted in this school, I my grades were pretty low because I, I was never good at school. I was very terrible. Um, what I did was I enlisted. I couldn't do game design. I had to start off in animation. And obviously that's not my thing. Everybody starts off in animation unless you're like culinary or something, you know? I don't know about any of that shit. I don't care about it. That's their job. So, my my GPA was like 1.2 or 1.3. I don't. It was it was pretty it's fucking uh, retarded level. And to get into game art and design, I had to be a 2.5 or above. So I planned out every semester with my counselor to do just general ed. Because, you know, I, I do get to learn all this game stuff, but you also have to, to do general ed. So I was like, all right, here's the thing. I'll get my grades up just by doing general ed. 
She's all, she's all like, okay, just do that. So that way you don't take classes you don't need to because each class runs around like $1,600 per class. Yeah, it's expensive. My total will be 90 grand that I have to pay. Well, hopefully it'll pay off because uh, game designers start $20 an hour, I've heard. But anyways, uh, I spent four semesters getting my grade up. And that required me to just concentrate so much on homework. And out of all those times, there, there are, out of that whole four semesters, there's, there was, uh, I think, three or four, I don't remember. I should remember, this is traumatizing. It was like four times I had to work with the group. And each time that group let me down. So, like, now that I'm into the nitty gritty stuff, now that I actually had my grades up, which is amazing, you know, set your mind to anything, you can do it. I uh, I got this stigma where I don't want people to screw with my grades. And it's not just the grades. It's the fact that from now on, because I, I took most of my gen ed to get where I'm at right now. Uh, from now on, what I do ends up in my portfolio. And my portfolio is like my resume to all those game companies. So if I have like a shitty portfolio because of some guy that just wanted to fuck around, you know, that that's on me I just I just tanked 90 grand I'm not gonna do that so yeah so uh, this guy that I was talking shit about I had him for my first semester of game design and we did good but he started showing these signs this semester and I was like oh man I actually had someone so it's just down to me and one person everybody that I've met in school straight out of high school so they're all fuck ups but anyways that's boring ass shit <laughs> I'm here for Google Plus mostly but I love you guys that and YouTube but you know YouTube is so toxic these days I'm just gonna use it for my own means but yeah um, so let's get right to it I'm gonna step into video games so let me tell you about what I like uh, I've been around since the Nintendo era. That was a long time ago. So I watched Mario grow up and Link, which has a special place in my heart. Poo hoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I love Link. That was my first video game, freaking Legend of Zelda. And I always, I would get up to the sixth dungeon. I remember when I was a kid, and I couldn't get any farther than that. It was just so hard. Now it's still hard, but I can, I can beat the game. But back then, fuck, you just had your imagination, Nintendo power. Which was actually pretty awesome back in the day. You know, before the internet was invented. Before everybody had an opinion. So yeah, um, I love that. I love Resident Evil. I love all the old school ones. From RE1 all the way to 5. Anything above 5, well... Anything above the Mercenaries 3D, I just don't play anymore. Because I, I don't know, that, that franchise was dear to my heart. And Capcom just crapped it out I love that for the past since 2006 I got so into this guy and I remember I was loving that when everybody was hating it everybody was telling me to get Final Fantasy X2 I'm like nah I'll get this instead because it looks kind of cool I like the animation I fell in love with it so much but it got so hard it gets really grindy so I mean if anybody likes to grind on tactical RPGs that's your go to place because you get to also make sim characters so you gotta level up the characters that you want to make but you you get the the automatic like I think it's like 12 main characters you know non-deletable and I love that game because you can level up to to uh, 9999 I think that was like one of the key points that I really liked about that game once it was over you can still do more crap <clears throat> of course as you all may know, my freaking my most favorite franchise is uh, Mega Man Legends. Tron is my waifu, the one and only. You can't have more than one. You can have plenty of bays, but you can only have one waifu. She's the one for me. Hmm. And yeah, I've um, I played Mega Man Legends up and down. I played Resident Evil 2 up and down countless times. I can. You can tell me a room and what items you have, and I can tell you where to go. <laughs> I know it that much. I even perfected the perfect guides from um, Versus Books, if anybody remembers who they were. You know, they just happened to be the most awesome, funniest books. 
for strategy guides and all that shit. Oh man, they were amazing. Oh, I still miss them. But I perfected that guide. Like I actually checked for every item and stuff like that. And that would make my own little notes <laughs> on that book. And I still have the folder somewhere. I got so much paraphernalia from Resident Evil. I mean, shit, when it came out... Well, um, Resident Evil 2 practically changed my life. After that, the rest was just history. And I remember the, the coolest thing about that was like... It was around 2 and 3. Around those two games. That I was with... I was in some kind of forum and we were all just fans of Resident Evil and we were like talking about scenarios of how they're going to end up going into Europe and it's going to be like a final stand and it's going to be like you know Chris versus Wesker and I put in my two cents I was like they should make a six disc game so like disc one is uh, Chris and <clears throat> and Jill disc two is like Leon and Claire disc three is like Rebecca and uh, I forgot who it was at the time this was before Resident Evil Zero, so Billy wasn't in the equation. And like it was just like all this crazy shit and like the Europe mansion would have a, a lab that would go down like thirty floors or something and it'd be like the simulation rooms. Dude, it was it was good times. Good times. Where the fuck did you do? Where the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do, Capcom? Jeez. Oh, I miss it. Good times, dude. Oh, I did, well, I uh, finally got around to beating Twilight Princess. <clears throat> the thing about that is that I played it when it came out on the Wii, and I absolutely despised it. I hated that game so much. I got up to Kakariko Village, and I didn't finish collecting the tears. I was just that annoyed. And this is from somebody who is the biggest Zelda fan out there, like, I, I've played the first one and I played every title ever since except for the CDI games which I didn't have the system for um, but I played every Zelda game that has come out and I would play them up and down and everything because that's one of the franchises I do love as well freaking Legend of Zelda but for some reason well there was, there was plenty of reasons but I did not like Twilight Princess whatsoever I hated being the wolf as soon as I was a wolf I wanted to be Link again as fast as possible and then the the tears of pillar, the pillar of tears, or some shit. You know, I had to collect sixteen drops, and then you can revert back to Link. And I didn't know this when I was playing the Wii U version, but they they cut it down to twelve. And I noticed, like, I was like, this game is it's not as annoying right now. <laughs> and then I looked it up, and apparently it was sixteen. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I mean, back then, shit, I couldn't I couldn't finish it. That was the first Zelda game I hated. That, and I haven't played. Skyward Sword I want to those are the only two Zelda games I haven't played what turned me off on Skyward Sword was that it was like a prequel to Ocarina of Time and that's when the whole timeline bullshit happened yeah I'm against the timeline I hate it <clears throat> stupid like Miyamoto did not sit down fucking 1980s with his mullet hanging out right he's like alright I am going to make a list of games <laughs> you know and he puts every game he wants to make and he makes the timeline like no you guys, stop trying to make Zelda Lord of the Rings. It's not Lord of the Rings. Fucking leave it alone. But it happened. It's official. So, I mean, I can't bitch about it. Well, I am, but, you know, it's if it's officially out there. It's real. You gotta accept it. So that's what I'm doing, but I'm just thinking of the future. Like, every time a title comes out, people are gonna ask, where is this in the timeline? Like, really? What about 20 years from now? You know, are we really gonna have an extensive, long-ass page of all the Zelda titles? Like, do you really want that? It's I don't know. It's just fucking bullshit. Oh, it's bullshit. But anyways, <clears throat> I'll tell you my version of the timeline. Oh. First timeline: Zelda one, Zelda two. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, this podcast is brought to you by Red Bull because that's what I'm drinking right now. Um, second timeline. The Super Nintendo Zelda. Link to the Past. That was a remake. Not a remake, but it's a, it's a reboot. 
It had nothing to do with anything. It didn't do anything with the first one or the second one. Those were the only three, three, three games that came out at that time. And they had nothing to do with any of these future ones, right? So I, I consider that like a retelling. And then I did play Link's Awakening. I think that was with the, with the Nintendo. And I don't know if that was with the Nintendo. I put that with the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo timeline. Because I played it when the DX one came out. So I'll give people that one. Uh, then after that, another reboot. Which was Ocarina of Time because it was 3D. So then it's Ocarina of Time. And then when Majora's Mask came out, I was like, oh, okay. So the Ocarina of Time link is the link that's going to appear throughout the entire game series. Like, this is the fleshed out character. So it was that. And then when Wind Waker came out, like everybody else, I was annoyed because I wanted the Hero of Time, not this kid. But then I played that game. And I ended up loving it so much. But that's... Uh, but anyways, besides that, it was... Uh, <clears throat> Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, the Phantom Hourglass, and then Spirit Tracks. The Four Swords, separate stories. Minish Cap, separate stories. And that's my timeline. Yeah, I know people don't like it, but I don't care. Shit. I play the game because they're fun, not because I want to connect the dots. But yeah, back into uh, Twilight Princess. Yeah, damn, I went off on a tangent there. I uh, wanted to give it a chance because, yeah, I was like, well, I am a fan of Zelda. So I did, and I made sure I got the Amiibo with it, which I think that's a staple, but I know they're going to come out with the Amiibo separate because when I bought the game, the Amiibo was just like the Amiibo casing of other Amiibos inside the box. It wasn't like the Mega Man uh, Legacy Collection where you get your gold Mega Man on a, on a white board. Like, this one actually had... Like, if it was a Smash Brothers Amiibo, kind of like a uh, drawing in it, for those of you that want to know. Don't don't get scared that, you know, they won't have those Amiibos. I, I think the Wolf Link and Min are going to be around for a long time. <clears throat> so I ended up getting it. I was like, screw it, might as well get the HD version. It's, uh, don't use the Wiimote. And I gotta say, I, I beat the game 100%, and I really enjoyed it. It was actually a lot of fun. And I want to point out that uh, because of that, I realized personally now that controls make or break a game. Because I just experienced that. I, it turns out, I guess, that I just I hated the Wiimote playing Zelda. Because I, it's the same thing on the GameCube. Well, not the GameCube, but, <laughs> you know, the, the Wii U, which is it, is like the GameCube. But, I mean, the, the, I guess the controls is what made me not like it. Because, I mean, I can't just, like, hate it and then like it. I mean, I saw the same things that I saw when I was playing it on the Wii. I just, it wasn't as enjoyable when I played it on the Wii. It was crazy. But, yeah. You know what? Twilight Princess was a good game. It was dick riding Ocarina of Time so much, though. I do got a gripe about that. Like, it was riding that shit like a Sibian. <laughs> No, it was terrible. I mean, god damn. Yes, I get it. I get the reference. I get freaking The Lost Woods. I get the Skull Kid. I get the Hero of Time. Like, alright. It's like 40% of the game was like, Hey, remember this? Ocarina of Time. It's what you wanted. It's like, dude, the game was fun on its own, but it was, it was just a little bit too many references to Ocarina of Time. Like, everybody's just dying for a Dark Zelda game. It was never dark. It had its moments, but it was never freaking Bloodborne. Or Dark Souls. Get over it, guys. But yeah, it was fun anyways. <clears throat> it was fun. I loved it. Kind of. Now, ah, speaking of Amiibos. Dude, I have a disgusting collection right now. I'm looking at... Right now, across the room, I got like 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13... I got more than 22. Alright, I think I got like 23 or 24. Because um, I got Falco yesterday. Finally. Got my boy Lombardi. I wanted him for a while, but he never came out. And uh, after a while, like, after the whole uh, Fire Emblem, when Lucina came out, I stopped waiting in line for any store. Like, 
I'm not like I hated it. Like every time an amiibo came out, it was like Black Friday. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. If it's not on the shelf, ready for me to pick up or like grab two or three to like see which one's the best one to get, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna wait in line. Well, the latest I've, I the that day that I did not get the Lucina amiibo, I stood up all night just chilling in my room. And then when it was like four hours before the store opened, I walked in. And there was already some fat bastard sitting there. And he was going to get every one. And then I saw the door and it said the number of amiibos. And like they all had one. <laughs> wow, man, this fat fuck is going to get everything. And he's probably never going to open them. Yeah, I opened my amiibos. I actually used them. I used those toys for their intended purpose. That's right. I called them toys because they are toys. I love that because it triggers people so much. <laughs> they're like, no, they're figurines. I'm like, nah, dude, they're toys. They're toys. You scan them in. You do shit. There's fucking Skylanders. They're toys. Oh, man. Speaking of that. I'm well, not speaking of that, but on a different subject. Uh, I, not, not right now, but I've been playing a lot of Mario Maker. I love designing levels on that freaking game. And I spend like six, five to six hours on my best ones. Because I've done some where they're like kind of crappy. Like the first ones I did weren't that great because I was learning how to use it. But um, I think my best ones, and I'll I'll post my levels up so you guys can see them <clears throat> on the description. It's uh, Nikki's Personal Delivery. That's, well, that one and uh, Ashley's Haunting Visit, which actually got the most votes for my stuff um, Ashley's Haunting Visit was when I actually started grabbing assets and I started making it look nice like I didn't make just the level but I was actually making them look pretty and then Nikki was uh, I started to like create rooms because of the doors and uh, recently I made the <laughs> I made a weeaboo stage super happy funky anime timer I called it something like that <laughs> Because it has that Yu Ayasaki girl. The jump! Um, I did that. And I'm starting a new level series. Where it's uh, Super Daisy Land. So I'm going to make... The, the Super Mario Land was like four worlds, right? But I want to make more. I want to make like five worlds. Or if I make four, I'm going to do four levels. Each world. But yeah, it's going to be all themed on Daisy and Sarasa Land. Because she's my favorite princess. I did that. I did two of them. And it was really hard to make because my levels apparently are really hard. They're always on expert. I got like some good ones that are on normal. And I try to make them easy and it's just so hard because my levels feel incomplete. They feel incomplete to me. Like I need to make more. Like I add more, you know, it's like it just seemed too easy. I guess too easy is too incomplete for me. I don't intentionally make them hard. I, uh,. I actually like I don't do those Kaizo shits I hate those so much and I try to avoid underwater like if any level starts underwater it's an automatic skip for me and if I ever do I pretty I pretty much am gonna add at least one water stage but they're gonna be so short they're gonna be like five or ten second long and it's gonna be like you have to go under a pipe kind of thing because I, I don't know I just hate water levels I hate them dude it's terrible hmm but yeah, that, you that's say so. my thing on that. Anyways, thought I'd move into some anime. Tell you what I what I like. So let's start from the very beginning. Back in 1990 something. <laughs> um, I think it was 97. Besides Dragon Ball, because I didn't know what anime was back when that came out, and I was a kid. I didn't know about Japanese animation. I, you know, everybody saw Dragon Ball. But before that, the first anime was, strangely enough, <clears throat> Serial Experiments Lane. Oh, man, that was that was a trip. It was weird. Because <laughs> it was such a serious anime. And you had to actually pay attention. But that's when I started getting into that whole uh, Japan culture. And I would get wall scrolls and shit like that. And uh, also, it was that mixed in with the release of Final Fantasy 7 that just threw me into the whole weeb culture 
and it was just a whole nother world on the internet <clears throat> forums and fan art and I, I do stay away from the fan fiction shit because it's terrible and it's ironic because you know my my internet persona is based on a, a practically a blonde character <laughs> it's supposed to be me right but like my my finished character is like it's pretty much Mega Man's armor with some uh, assets from the Bonds like Teasel's shoulders and his chest plate I tried to make it a little bit different but I like Mega Man designs and I wanted my own version of it <laughs> so yeah I guess you can't blame me right just for joining the rest of those fuckos but uh speaking of which oh man I've been trying to make a series like that like I, I have been trying to make a fan fiction and I'm talking like actual good stuff like I was reading this book called story which is pretty much um it teaches you how to screen write and one of the things that really irks me is when people do their fan fictions and all that shit or their role plays that they never get the characters right or they do but then they'll forget something like you know when you do that one of the main rules is that you gotta know everything about the character every single bit of detail cause you know as a fan you're gonna notice it I'll notice it thousands of other people notice it but I don't know some people on the internet they're like ah, I'm just not gonna think about it oh man it did. that just reminds me <laughs> perfect example I was triggered a couple weeks ago can't believe I used that word <laughs> so I'm against all that bullshit internet like wah 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 <laughs> I was on the uh, this guy uh, the only the fuck was it that this guy a community I was looking for the word community Alright, and I usually post it because I love that series, as I said before. I'll just post it, and then somebody posted a picture of, like, Laharl banging Metallia. And I just wrote back, I was like, there are so many inconsistencies with this. And then the guy asked me, like, what? What, what inconsistency? Like, what? I think he said, or something like that. And I just listed, like, all these things why Laharl will never be interested in Metallia. Having, having been, having played... The Witch and the Hundred Knight up and down like seven times last year, you know, to get all the achievements on Xbox. Having falling in love with that story that was so amazing. I highly recommend you guys watch The Witch and the Hundred Knight on YouTube. And I say that because yeah, the game wasn't that much fun to play, I'll admit. It's a hack and slash and I don't like hack and slashes. But what really kept me going was the storyline, which was amazing. Right, so having played all that, and then having, have you know, being a huge fan of Disgaea, and then somebody just mashing these people together, like they're just gonna automatically fall in love, like no, no, that doesn't work. But this cunt, oh, I was just so done with that community. After that, I made my own, the uh, niece, I call it Nipponichi Software Community, which is just everything that related to that company, so it's not just Disgaea, and. Uh, yeah, that was a perfect example of why you should know your characters up and down when you do stuff like that. Granted, this is just a picture. But when I was talking with this guy, he didn't even know. He thought that Visco died in freaking Witch in the Hundred Night. No worries, it's not a spoiler. There's a lot of stuff like that going on. Well, it kind of is. Well, nah, because she is a main character. But there's a point, there's a point in the game where you know you think she dies but she doesn't and like there was a, there was another point where like he asked the question like how do you know that so and so did this and this you know to avoid spoilers and I was like oh my god it's in the freaking ending so I went on YouTube I looked for the ending I went I, I did the timestamp and I posted on my like, here do some research before you bring this sin into the world and I was just so done with that community. I was like, fuck it. I'll make my own. I'll make my own and I'll get like 15 members and that'll be it. I think that's what I'm looking at right now. 15, right? Subscribers. Well, I'm not on the internet right now. So who cares? Oh, sorry. I was getting up. So yeah. As is... Dude, I, I have no idea how this went from anime to video games again. But anyways. Other animes I've seen... 
old ones, dude. Um, I've seen Love Hina, Onegai Teacher, I saw Berserk. Oh, dude, Berserk was awesome. Uh, I saw, like, the first 13 episodes of Naruto. And then I never watched it again. <laughs> oh, man, it was, um, it was up in the part where it was way, way beginning. Where Naruto was gonna, was about to fight Kakashi. No, not Kakashi. Um, Zabuza. And Kakashi, Kakashi was like in some kind of bubble. Yeah, it was, it was way bad. I think it was like episode 12, I think it was. Episode 12 or 13. Didn't watch it after that. I saw two episodes of like One Piece. And it was okay, but I didn't care for the anime. I was just reading the manga a lot more. Um, Claymore was another really good one. I bought <clears throat> all the noir ones. Just like a assassins for hire. Um, all all of the original dot hack. Um, <clears throat> the dot hack chibi, which is the black rose with the pink hair, pinker hair, because they both had pink hair. Ah oh, man, I used to have that card game, and nobody played it. It was so sad. I love freaking dot hack. I also have um shoot I wish I can see my library but I don't have it and a lot of this shit now I just kind of download but the most recent stuff that I've seen was uh, Ore Monogatari which I really loved and um oh well the thing about that it was last I was like a half a no half I'll say a year ago alright oh no no well yeah a year ago when I was first starting to go into his university, I uh, I read the preview for Ore Monogatari on a, on the manga that I got at Comic Con, and I was like, dude, I love this. This is like the bad guy, the goon that gets the the cute girl. So I looked it up online, and somebody had translated like the first five or six books at the time, and I was like, dude, this is so cool. And I was just reading up on him. Right, this was when when Manga Storm was actually good. Before they got copyrighted, I don't know what the fuck happened, but something happened to them, and I can't stream my shit anymore. No, I can't stream. I can't read my shit anymore. I gotta find another uh, anime place. So, actually, if you guys know any uh, website you can recommend me to where I can just read free manga, please let me know, cause I, I love reading it, and it's been a while. That was actually the last one I read. Um. So, yeah, I was into that, right? And then. I found out that they were making a an anime of that and I was like yes oh man I can't wait <clears throat> then I just forgot about it and then I was going I was going through classes I was in one of my classes for some reason and I see this girl watching it and I was like I, I went up to her I'm like oh my god where are you watching that I need to know because I want to see this and she told me oh just go to kiss anime I'm like what the fuck is that so you know I look at that and man freaking amazing everything I ever want and the best thing is because right now I got no internet yeah it's terrible I have no internet I have to go outside of my house for internet but with Kiss Anime I can just download the episodes and watch them wherever I want you know so I just went on a tear just watching episodes and episodes of that waiting every week I downloaded all of that I downloaded freaking um I'll get to that in a minute I was thinking Fate Stay Night. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. In a good minute. Um, Ore Monogatari. I just downloaded Daily Lives of High School Boys. I want to see that. I saw the first two episodes. which was funny as hell. Uh, Bake Monogatari. That one's kind of weird. It is good though, but damn. Like under the description, there's like nine series that I have to watch for the whole story. Which I'll get down. Shit, I'll get down. I downloaded most of the Digi Chariots that I owned again and just rewatched them because there was some that never made it here and I want to see those again. Uh, I saw recently I saw the One Punch Man's. Everybody knows who One Punch Man is, right? Um, there was so many too. Um, shit, I can't name off the top of my head. But yeah, I, I've been watching some of the current stuff right now. Ah, yes. Let me get into Fate Stay Night. Oh man, I love that series when it came out. I think it was back in uh, 2006. And the reason I really like that show is because 
I used to, you know, when I when I used to draw like anime characters on my sketch pad, I would draw the eyes like that series does. Like that was how I drew my eyes. And I really like Saber cuz, you know, well my ideal woman is blonde with green eyes and I was like, "Oh shit, that's her." And she's from England. So yeah, I I kind of like that character a lot. And then um I watched that series. I actually loved it. It was kind of slow at parts. It really was. But I have a a friend that was that isn't into anime or video games that much. He wasn't into anime, but he he played some video games. And I introduced him to Fate Stay Night. He loved it because he likes like war shit. And I'm like, dude, this is it. It's like cavalries and horses and all that stuff that you never really see. <laughs> but he loved it. And <clears throat> I would like. You know, I'd find wallpaper and stuff like that, but I really love Fate Stay Night. But after 2006, 2007, I was just playing video games more than anything. And I had completely stopped watching anime for almost... Like, I'd watch it in and out, but I wouldn't be like I am now where I'm looking at the latest stuff. Because back then, I would buy my bootlegs. I wouldn't download them. I actually wanted physical copy. And I say bootlegs because I don't want to pay... Suncoast, which is out of business now. I didn't want to pay Suncoast thirty dollars for four episodes. It's like why I can go across the street and get the entire series for thirty bucks. <laughs> I want my shit now. <laughs> right? So they uh they cut and the thing was they, they um I don't know who I'll I'll just say the government. The government was cracking down on these stores that were selling like these bootleg videos. Man and it sucks because I actually it really affected me because I wanted to watch Beautiful Joe favorite video game <laughs> not all time but I love Beautiful Joe and the anime was so funny and I didn't get to see the end of it well I ended up seeing it like, but like a Portuguese version on YouTube but the bootlegger that was that was uh, translating those things or not translating but like doing the dubs you know his store got shut down, so I never got to see the third CD because it was, it was his D, it was three DVDs that should have came out. The first two, I owned them, and then I'm assuming the third one was the rest because there was only like 20 episodes left after that. And because of that crackdown, I just I stopped watching anime because I didn't like the shit on Adult Swim. I didn't like Toonami. I didn't like any of that garbage. Ah, I guess I was a real freaking. What do you call it? I'm a real stickler when it comes to that. Dubbing. Oh, God. Some dubbing is good. You know? I'll admit, even back then, some of it's good, but a lot of it was terrible for me. Like, I don't know. Like, Japanese actors put more oomph into their work. And I think, like, we're starting to realize that now. Like, because we've been coming out with some good dubs. But back in the day, even, even 2006, back in the day, this shit was terrible. I just recently saw... It was like a minute of Fate Stay Night dubbed. I don't know how. I just downloaded it. It's like I, I thought there were... It said Drama CD, the folder that I, that I torrented. So I thought it was like, oh, it's you know one of those like... You hear the series, but in like in a, a radio format. And it wasn't. It was actually like an English dubbed version of Fate Stay Night. And it was terrible. Oh, God. It was fucking cringing. That's how bad it was. But, um... Yeah, I didn't like any of that stuff. I, I liked the whole original quality. The only ones that really matched it was like the Mexican dubs. I really love those. I had a friend that always told me that everybody sounds like Goku. That's why he doesn't like the Mexican ones. And I'm like, do they? <laughs> oh, man, I, I recorded. Um, I remember they had Dr. Slump. They had that back in... Shit, that was like 95, 96... And I downloaded, there was like 500 something episodes and I just needed like 23 more episodes to have the entire series recorded in Spanish. I got the tapes. It was like five, six tapes that I have of just Dr. Slump in Spanish. I'm hoping to export those into digital files someday. I need that VCR to PC converter. Who knows? But, oh dude, I used to love watching Dr. Slump. The only dubs I liked, Spanish and then, uh, some American but yeah that was the main reason why I stopped watching anime for a while 
and until half a year ago when I found out about Kiss Anime I just typed fate and brrr, like all this shit just pulled out my fuck fuck I missed out oh man I was just so happy dude I was lit <laughs> so what I did is you know I just got to downloading and I downloaded I think what 2000 yeah yeah I downloaded 10 years worth of Fate Stay Night and I just got done with the whole uh, Unlimited Blade Works television series because I wasn't just watching Fate Stay Night you know I was watching other shit I was watching like the Digi Chart that never came out or more than Atari the One Punch Man's I saw um, shit I just can't think of anything else and then the Fate Kalade Liner Prism Alia oh dude I'll get onto that in a minute um <laughs> I, uh, and the thing is, I didn't like sit at home and watch it. You know, this is between between work and school and homework on my bus rides to school, forward and back, and work forward and back. I would watch my animes to kill the time. You know, because a bus ride, the bus ride to work is like about an hour, so I can squeeze in like two episodes, right? And then my trip to school is actually two hours. Two hours to get to school. So, you know, I'm on a tear on anime. That's the only time I really have time for that. When I go home, I I didn't really play much video games for the first year of school. I play them after my breaks. But during school, I the Wii U was collecting dust. The fucking 3DS was nothing more than a street pass thing. And uh, I, I just didn't play them. And that, yeah, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> I don't have the latest tech. I got a Wii U, I got a 3DS... I got a PS3 and I'm fucking happy. I do want a PS4 eventually for uh, Mirror's Edge. You know, just to get with the times. The Sky 5 and all that crap. Uh, for now, it's just the 3DS and the Wii U. Mainly Nintendo right now. Because I can play a lot of their offline stuff. But yeah, I was catching up on nine years of Fate Stay Night. And though I'm almost to the end. Because I watched everything. I just need to watch uh, Carnival Phantasm, which is... It has characters from different animes, I heard. I don't know what it's about. I know Saber's in it, so I was like, oh, I'm sold. So I'm going to watch that. I highly recommend you guys watch Fate Stay Night. Uh, I do like the story from the first one, Type Moon. I mean, like I said, it's really slow. In the beginning, kind of. I do like the relationship that Shiro has with uh, Saber throughout the series. Um, Because, how do I say it? It's like uh, that version and then the UFO table or UFO table. They, Unlimited Blade Works is pretty much the OVA. It's, um, for those of you that don't know, there's Fate Stay Night, right? Let me break it down. There's 2006 Fate Stay Night. That one's a slow one, but it's really good. I like it. <clears throat> then after that, there's um, Unlimited Blade Works, which is the OVA. It's like like 24 episodes of Fate Stay Night condensed into a movie. And then there's Fate Zero, which is the prequel to the first one. And then after that, there's Unlimited Blade Works TV, which is the movie expanded 25 episodes. So pretty much Unlimited Blade Works is somewhat of a a remake of the first Fate Stay Night. They did change a couple things though. It is different. There's something that caught me off guard. But like he uh, his relationship with Saber is stronger in the original than it is on the remake. On the remake it's mostly about him and Rin. They're just cool and all but I kind of like that he uh he had feelings for Saber. That's why I do like the first one still. But the the newer ones, watch the ones from UFO Table or UFO Table. Those they made them better. Like they knew what was wrong with the first one, and they said, "Okay, we're gonna fix this and that. It's gonna have more action. The dialogue's gonna happen while this is going on." Like they presented it way better. <clears throat> and then, um, dude, I totally forgot I was going with this. Yeah, well, Face Tonight. Yeah, I recommend that anime. It's really good. If anything, just watch the movie of Unlimited Blade Works. It's just an hour and a half. 
I really don't want to recommend that because then you won't watch the TV. But I recommend I recommend you watch Fate Zero first. But that's 24 episodes as well. Shit. You know what? Fuck it. Just watch the movie. And if you like it, then watch Fate Zero. Because Fate Zero is a prequel to it. Um, I do recommend also, if you do want to see them all, watch Fate Zero first. Story-wise, watch Fate Zero first. Because you learn about the whole the Holy Grail War and all that stuff. And then watch the Unlimited Blade Works. Um, I don't know if the movie or not. I'd say... I mean, if you don't want to get invested, just watch the movie after Zero. But, honestly, I recommend Fate Stay Night, um, Unlimited Blade Works. Fate, Fate Zero first, and then Unlimited Blade Works TV. It's amazing. <clears throat> oh, speaking of which, uh, they had this little separate section called... Uh, Fate Kaleid Liner Prisma Ilya, which is it has to do with one of the characters in the game in the game, sorry, in the anime. It's about this ten year old girl that becomes a magical girl. And I was like, Yeah, I haven't seen that since uh Card Captors Which is a long time ago. That was the last magical girl. I don't know if Digichair's considered a magical girl, I don't think it is. She's more of an idol. But I um Yeah, I think Card Captor was the last time. That or Magic Knight's Ray Earth. I watched them both, but that was the last time I saw one of those. And it's cool because, you know, it's like the whole QT Magical Girl thing, but it also has like the awesome fights from Fate Stay Night. The revised ones from UFO Table. But, um, it was crazy because I, um, I was actually on my Google Plus account. I was recommended not to watch them. Because it's a lot of ecky. I'm like, what? But I was like, fuck it. I'm still watching it anyways, right? So I'm watching it, right? There was... The, the most you'll ever see on the first season was <clears throat> the main character, Elia. She has a crush on her brother. And, um... I know, it's kind of gross. But hey, it's Japan. Once you're 10, you're down the fuck. Um... <laughs> that's a joke I always make. Um... The reason why, like, technically the brother and her from Fate Stay Night are not related. They are in a sense, but not by blood. And that's part of, um, that's part from the original, that's what happens. And they don't explain it until Fate Zero, which I don't want to spoil that. But yeah, they, they're, they're indirectly connected. So in this one... I don't know what the deal is with this one. I think it's the same kind of premise where, like... Shiro was adopted but she kind of likes him and in the last episode she was like waking up and she thought it was him at the in front of her bed so she leans in to kiss him and then when she looks she wakes up like fully it's like her friend <laughs> and it makes her friend turn gay <laughs> because now she has feelings for her they you know, and they're both 10 right so it's like at that moment in their life where they're all like oh shit is this what sexuality is and you know Man, so that's that, right? I, I guess that was like the little, the little reward you get for watching the whole. I think it was twelve episodes. I don't know. I just, I just watch them, right? And then the second season comes, and for reasons that you'll find out later if you ever watch it, Elia has like a twin person. Has I guess I don't want to say twin sister, but it's like a. Yeah, let's just call it a twin sister. And her intent is to kill Elia because she wants to be like the original. So, right? So, they're having like a fight. And then her friend that she kissed, uh, Miyu, joins in the fight, right? So, it's them two. But now it just becomes Miyu and that other girl. Which her name is Kuro. Or Kuroe. But she goes by Kuro now. So, Kuro and Miyu are just fighting, right? And they're just going at it. And then, like, it's all action-packed, and then everything stops, right? And then Kuro grabs Miyu by the arms, and she just starts going to town on her face. Like, they're just making out. It was so bad, dude. And then it has, like, the porn music playing and everything. <laughs> oh, shit, man. It was like, 
Like, they were like, all right, man, this is your jack-off time. Do it. Pull down your pants and fucking jerk it. <laughs> they were doing... It, it had everything. They had the passion. Like, the girl was just overwhelmed. You had the drool coming out and everything. I was like, damn. This is some good shit. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. What the fuck? They're 10. <laughs> right? And I was like, dude, this is sick. And uh, there's an explanation for it, obviously. Stupid-ass explanation. You know, the whole, like... She needs to kiss to have life energy. Which, like, eh, there are other ways that they don't tell, but you, you assume that it's perverted, right? And then it happens not all the time, but there are moments when that happens. And then on the third season, because that was the second season, the second season, two ways, called two way, W E I. Um, that's when that happens. That's when like the whole Yuri stuff happens. Two way hers, which is the third season. There was another... There's That happens here and then, but not as bad. But then there's this sauna scene where, like, it just gets... In, I don't say intense, but... I was looking at it, I was, like... Quiet for, like, three seconds. I'm like... This is hentai. <laughs> this is not anime. This is hentai. They, they're naked, and... You know, the mist covers all the cash and prizes, but there's not even that much cash and prizes to begin with. Because they're fucking kids. Oh, God, I was... And it looks good, you know? And I'll tell you why. Because a lowly in anime is way different than a kid in real life. A kid in real life is disgusting, right? But see, in anime, this is my theory. Everything looks hot, right? Because all they do is they grab the female body and they just make it smaller. I'm not talking like like they they shrink it. Kind of like, okay, let's make this this generic body, but let's make it four inches smaller. And bam, it's a girl. Give it big eyes. It's a little girl. You know? That's not how it is. That's not, like... They they depict these girls having, like, these slim hourglass bodies. And they're, like, eight, nine. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's stupid. That's why it's weird. Like, I don't know. It's just... Like I can see where where people like where the audience, the target audience is about, but it's not the same. It's ugh, I don't even want to get into that. It's just <laughs> it's it's Japan. Let's just put it that way. I can't put it into words right now. I'll probably put it into words correctly someday, but I don't want to just sit here in silence and think about like what, like how do I like fuck I like you know I just can't. I can't explain the thoughts on it. But the one thing I can't explain is that they, the lowlies do not look like that in real life. But yeah, I mean, if, if you're into all that stuff, fake Kalei line or two-way hers is the way to go. Because <laughs> it, it has its moments. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But I'm watching... Well, I already finished watching it. But I'm watching it because it's part of the Fate Stay Night series. And they're making a third one. It's called uh, Fate Clay Liner Dry. <laughs> and I made the joke. I was like, guess Elia's going in dry this time. Huh? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know, that was a cheap joke. <laughs> I still found it funny as hell. Oh, man. Fucking lolis. It, it, it released my inner lolicon. But, uh... <laughs> Actually, speaking of which... Before that, I saw another one called, uh... Domonoji Khan and that that was intentional like for those of you that don't know what it's about it's about a a grade student that has a crush on her teacher and it sounds really gross but the whole like the thing that I like about that um, anime was that it covered certain topics that people would not even think about talking about here in the U.S. And yeah, it's pretty depraved sounding, right? Because it's it's a little girl that's a crush on a teacher. But like, we all have that moment when you had a crush on your teacher, right? At one point, or unless you all didn't have attractive teachers, I did. God damn, some were stacked. But there's that, right? And then there was a there's like a novel that's like two hundred and something books, I think. And it's it's just as bad. It's even worse. But the good thing is that it covers like again it covers all the stuff that happens in school 
that people don't want to talk about. And that, that I think that's what makes it really good. That and like, it's not like the teacher was into her, you know. Like the teacher was actually trying to help her because she was a delinquent student. You know, she didn't have a mother. Typical anime, right? I don't have a mother. Didn't have a mother. Didn't have any like, like um, proper upbringing. So the whole premise was like, she's acting to the teacher all sexually because she wants attention in general. It's like, like that, that kid that never got proper direction. I guess is uh, the best way to put it. And the first, um, like the the whole point of the anime was like him reaching out, getting through to her to like actually be a good person, which he does. Spoilers, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what made it really good but like the book just well not the book but the the manga series it's on manga storm well it was it goes on like all these things about like bullying like real bullying not the stupid shit that happens today we're talking like you know getting picked on at school every day kind of bullying the whole like uh you know kids growing up asking questions uh you know, uh, strangers that kidnap students outside of school, like all these subjects that that it gets really iffy. They talk about it. I know I was just enthralled by it too, but it has its very bad uh, moments. I'll bust a Hank Hill, and be like, oh god, <laughs> I can't do a good Hank Hill, but I'll just put something on the audio. <clears throat> but yeah, um, damn, that was a while back. You know, I I did for a little bit in 2012 watch some anime, and that's where I got that. But I torrented that. I didn't know about Kiss Anime. I actually torrented that, and I torrented a uh, Gothic, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, um, I guess that's my rant on lolis. Disgusting. <laughs> oh shit, we're reaching the end. I uh, kind of want to keep this like around an hour. Um. I was planning on just 30 minutes and I just kind of did shit on the fly like I didn't I wanted to properly make like you know a structured podcast about what I'm going to talk about and stuff like that and I wrote something but it's not like in detail it's just like points of interest um oh shit did I mention the origin of my freaking username I don't think I did I guess I'll end off with that. And if I did, then you get to hear it again. So, the name, Sirabot42. Yeah, I didn't go over this. The origin of my name. I used to go, back in the wee days of the internet, I used to go by Sephrage, because I like Sephiroth. Yeah, dude, I was a fucking American weeb. Fucking Cloud Strife, all that shit. Pull my pants up. Frosted tips. Backwards hat, sunglasses, flannel shirt, listening to Nirvana. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Yeah, that was me. Oh, except for the flannel shirt. But, um. Oh, shit, yeah. Origin. God damn, I just totally forgot. Dude, damn, my mind is just fucking out of here, dude. It's just so. I'm, it's just so hot. This past week has been so fucking hot. Fuck, man, it's hot. <sighs> yeah, um. Anyways, it was on my senior year, and I remember I was playing a Mars Catcon 2, and I was playing as Tron. She was one of my main characters. Then I remember I unlocked the Sherbot, which was just this little thing. I'm like, what the hell is that, dude? What the fuck kind of unlock is that? And this was for the Dreamcast, right? <laughs> so I was like, screw it. You know, I did some research on who she was, and I saw this game called uh, The Misadventures of Tron Bun. So I was like, oh, shit, I'll buy it. So I go to, like... um EB Games at the time which is now GameStop in most places and I saw it there it was and I remember seeing that cover like five before that I think this was in 2000 this was in 2000 when I found out who Tron was but five or six years ago I th- no not five or six what the fuck am I talking about Okay, I've seen that. No, no. Because, you know, Tron came out, I think, 99 or 98. I don't remember. I remember that game was out. I've seen it before, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? 
And then I said to myself, eh, it's not like I'm going to play this any day. And lo and behold, to the present day of that time, I think it was like a year or two later, I saw that game and I saw the back of it. I'm like, I remember this. I grabbed this game before and I didn't want to play it. I said, fuck it. And I bought it for $8 because it was used. And it was funny because all I did was just to switch out the CD case and I just cleaned the bottom of the CD. It did not have a scratch. I bought it new for $8 at EB Games. Popped it into PS1. This was during finals week too. And I remember mom was breaking my balls for it. <laughs> but I was like, fuck it. I want to watch. I want to play. And dude, I just fell in love. <clears throat> it was, I don't know, it was like I was playing an anime. And then after that, I, after that, um, I bought Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 at the same time. But I bought them just so I can find out what happened to the Bonds. And that's pretty sad because they never kind of recovered after Mega Man Legends. <laughs> it's sad because when you when you play the first one and then you're like, oh, dude, Tron went through all this trouble just to save a brother because of the ship that they had. And then, in you know, after Legends 1, uh, they kind of lose all their money. But then they they ended up... They, they didn't lose all of it. You know, they there was some, like... I want to say silver lining, whatever you call it. Like, they they got some huge amount of cash in the end, but they got crippled severely. And then in Legends Two, it was just pathetic because they were just scraping by with their machines, and then Mega Man would just come in and like, brr, 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 just kill them. <laughs> Fucking lemons in their face. And they never really recovered. And I think Glide is dead. Nah. I always remember when he, in, in one part of the game. This isn't the end. Like, it was funny because... Oh, no. Like, they disconnect a train and then Glide goes off into nothingness and blows up and then Teal's like, oh, we'll miss you, followed by maniacal laughter. <laughs> That's a different thing. But, yeah, after... um, When I was playing Legends, I decided that my name will be SirBot42. And that is my online persona. And I have been... I have been SirBot42 ever since. I am the only one. I am the original. I remember there was one faker that tried to be me, but you can't. <laughs> I was just already everywhere. So yeah, if you see SirBot42 in any like website or something, that's probably me. Um, not all of it, because some people did take my name. Like when I had a brief Tumblr account. And yeah, <laughs> Tumblr, right? And I still break people's balls for it, even though I have one. But <laughs> I, I have a Tumblr account. And it's called the Real Serbot Forty Two, because somebody had taken Serbot Forty Two, and then like eventually that guy found out, and he called me out on it. But nothing ever happened of it, because he called me out on it with the review of The Witch and the Hundred Knight of how much he hated it. Um, I did when I got the Wii U. I I was gonna name myself Serbot. But I was like, you know what, no. Because I tried to take the name Serbot. Like in Capcom Unity, I, I named myself Serbot. I haven't used that place in a while. i really grown to dislike how what Capcom became. But if it's not Serbot, it's Serbot42. Which I know it's confusing now, right? But I try to keep everything Serbot42. Like my Twitter is at Serbot42. Google Plus is Serbot42. Um... The Wii U is Serbot 42, and I did that by choice. I didn't just do Serbot anymore. So that's the moniker I go by. I've been doing that for 15 years. 15, 16 years. Because I want to say I started this in 2000. Late 2000, I think, is when I played Tron. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that that's who I am online. That is the origin. And the thing is, on Legends 2, you get you get letters, right? And you get one. And this is what people get wrong. And I'm not... It's like... I hear it so much and it's so incorrect that even I'm starting to believe that it's right. But you get a letter when you become bad. You know, all you got... Like, there's a trick where you can become bad by kicking pigs or shooting buildings down where you turn dark. You know, evil. Um, I did a trick where you corner a pig into the corner and you just keep kicking it until you turn really dark. But you start getting letters from Tron and stuff, and you don't get like thank you letters from people you saved. And everybody starts talking to you weird and starts treating you like shit. Because <laughs> you know you're a bad guy pretty much. But 
but you get a letter asking you to join the bonds right and it's signed by Sirbot42 <clears throat> and I was like you know what that'll be me right I think that's when I decided like you know what that's gonna be my username like most definitely because there is no Sirbot42 there is but it's like a it's a secret unlockable I believe and uh no, no, here's the thing. In the Japanese version of Misadventure of the Trombone, there is a 41st Serbot. And it's supposed to be like a fan, like a lewd fan. Right? And it's funny because after that game, he's referenced in MVC2. When you do the combo, you get 41 hits. And um, so there's 41, you know, there's one secret Serbot. Because it's normally just 40. And in Mega Man Legends 2. The letter that was given to Mega Man to ask to join is by Sirbot42. The mistake is, is that people keep referencing that they invite Mega Man to be Sirbot number 42. And that's not it. Ma they did not invite Mega Man to be Sirbot42. They invited him to become a part of the Pirates. And I'm going to look into that. Like, I am just so unsure now that I'm going to pop up my PS1. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> oh, I do plan on buying the PSN, but not right now. But I do, I have the three original games. But yeah, that's uh, one misconception. I hope that uh, hopefully gets cleared up. Probably on the next podcast, I'll let you guys know. But yeah, I guess that's it for the first podcast, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I might do this regularly, like every week or so. Who knows? For all you uh, five people that are listening. <laughs> I use. I want to use this as a way to just rant my bullshit. Oh man, I hope the chair wasn't too loud. And yeah, I mean, fuck. I listen to all these podcasts and it just sounds easy. So I was like, hey, fuck it. Why can't I do it? I'll vent my I'll vent my ideas into the world. <laughs> and also, I want to do a, uh, a uh, what's it called? A conspiracy theory podcast. Kind of like Ron does on GTA 5. If you guys know what I'm talking about, yeah. It's going to be hilarious. But I'm thinking about it. If I do, I, I got to research all these conspiracy theories and then just muddle it up all together. It's going to be like a script, pretty much. It'd be so much fun to do. Obviously, you know, I don't believe in the shit I'm going to talk about on that. Although, I do believe some of it, because some of it's just too coincidental. But, it's going to be meant as a parody, kind of like podcast. But that's a whole different thing. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening, and I'll see you possibly next week. Alright, see ya, cunts.